का टेबल ले आना पड़ेगा When they ask me, what puja we should have in Vancouver, I had heard about this ashram that it is placed in very beautiful surroundings of nature. And as nature is being created by the power of Saraswati, I thought best would be to have the puja of Saraswati here. Another thing is that when people live in nature, they became they, they become extremely creative. Their delicate feelings are preserved and they are never in a rush or they are not what we can call too much modernized because nature soothes them down. So also the creativity of Saraswati adds to artist and I knew that there must have been many artists in this country created since long. <clears throat> the Canada as such, I feel, is the Hamsa Chakra of the Vishuddhi. But the power of Saraswati becomes Maha Saraswati when it is manifested by the Maha Brahma Deva, which is called as Hiranya Garbha. For that she has to cross through the Hamsa. She crosses through Hamsa and becomes the Vishnu Maya Shakti. I mean, she, she is the Vishnu Maya Shakti. So Saraswati becomes the Vishnu Maya. She crosses at two points, one at Hamsa and another at Vishuddhi. So she is the sister of Sri Krishna. So Saraswati was born as the sister of Sri Krishna and when Krishna's mama, his name was uncle, was Kamsa. He came to kill her. She just rose into the sky <clears throat> and became the lightning. And she declared the coming of Sri Krishna that he is already there existing. So the relationship between Shri Krishna and Vishnu Maya is that of a brother and a sister. And surprisingly, the other day we celebrated the Rakhi Bandhan, Raksha Bandhan, which is the same thing as the brother sister's relationship. So now here we are celebrating actually the deity, which is the sister of Shri Krishna. <coughs> Later on she was born as Draupadi and that's why Shri Krishna went to save her chastity because it's the brother only who is concerned about the chastity and the name of the sister. So this is what yesterday happened that is the Saraswati Puja. So Vishnu Maya herself yesterday sixteen times thundered here and I didn't tell anybody what was happening but I knew she would do that. 
And apart from that, she has also threatened Washington. That's a good thing, because Washington has to be awakened. Now, these are very, very subtle things and very subtle relations. And only I can tell these things because I know them, that these relations exist. <coughs> so I was not surprised <coughs> that she was there, but exactly 1600 times <laughs> she blasted this part of Vancouver, is to show <coughs> that the time has come for you to understand that Sahaja Yoga is so important. And if we do not assert ourselves fully to Sahaja Yoga, Vishnu Maya is going to take another form, which may burn all your forest, may burn everything. <coughs> now you must know that lightning represents all the five elements uh, in it. It has sound, it has light, uh, it is in the ether, it acts in the ether. Also it has got what you call the water in it. And when the water goes into friction, which is the Mother Earth, so all these things act through her. So this Vishnu Maya yesterday showed us that I am here now, please worship Me. And so far we have never worshipped Saraswati. And Brahmadeva is not worshipped anywhere because He created this world, He created all these uh, woods and all these things and <coughs> they created all these seas and all the lands, all the um, stars, universes after universes. But we are not to worship, like we worship this tree or that tree, we are not to worship anything of that kind. Only thing, whatever is created by Mother Earth, like Swambhus, that's only we worship. And that too we worship now in a way that is in an abstract way. <coughs> because wherever they are, have appeared, people are doing commercial religion. So we don't go to these places also as Sahaja Yogis. <coughs> so you can understand why all these things happened unexpectedly yesterday after my coming, that uh, there was such a light of lightning which never happened before and people were surprised. So is the Krishna sister who is uh, a much more uh, dynamic and Jwalant la English for the cash of us. Jwalant. Much more fiery personality. Much, much more fiery personality. Sri Krishna's essence is that he is a uh, he is sweetness, is madhurya, is his <coughs> uh, is his capacity and Radha is the Allah the Daini Shakti, means the one which gives you that joy which creates uh, uh, Tulakitwala, raises your hair with joy. So, <laughs> I mean it's, but in Sanskrit it's Pulakit, Pulakit is the word. So, this beauty of uh, Sri Krishna, which is sweetness, the Leela uh, creating uh, beautiful uh, feelings of oneness, of communication, all that is in Sri Krishna. But she is the one who warns, and that is how the warning came. And she is a very fiery personality which warns everyone. So, on one way, she has proved my coming here, that I am here, perhaps maybe to the people who are aboriginals, they might understand that this is what was prophesied and that has happened. And also that you people have to realize, it's a warning, that you cannot just allow Sahaja Yoga to drift in such a manner that it 
takes its own course and works out and you are just by the way there. So this is the warning of Sri Krishna's sister Vishnu Maya, which is Saraswati herself, and that is what today we are going to worship her. Only the Sahaja Yogis, those who are enlightened people, can worship Maha Saraswati. Otherwise, people can only worship Saraswati because with worship of Saraswati you can read books, you can uh, create dances, music for the amusement of human beings. But actually the Saraswati Puja is meant for a people of ordinary uh, awareness, means ordinary or normal human awareness. But for Sahaja Yogis it is the Maha Saraswati which is to be worshipped. Now, as I have told you, this Maha Saraswati becomes the Vishnu Maya. And she is Vishnu Maya, so you have to be person that you should yourself should inform people like the Vishnu Maya does what Sahaja Yoga is with your fiery talks with things of exciting them, telling them, what are you up to? But what I have seen is that mostly uh, when people speak they try to be very gentle and sweet, like Sri Krishna. We tried that in America, that it might work with Americans, but it did not. They like people like, say, that uh, Graham fellow or somebody like that who talks in a fiery way. And I think this is what we have to learn from yesterday's experience, that you need really some fiery speakers and fiery people, because they are not at all sensitive to normal uh, sensations. See, they, all their sensations are dead, I think. They have become uh, numb and you have to give them some shocks. They like shocks, see. Newspapers have to give them shocks, uh, uh, any event that is shocking, that can only attract their attention. Even the music has to be so much that it should break the rocks, so it should be such music that will just break their heads. So they have become really uh, rocky people. And you have to understand that their rockiness can only be shattered by Vishnu Maya. And that's why this puja that we have today in Vancouver has a very great significance, not only for Canada, but also for America. Americans are taking for granted. Whatever disease is coming to them, whatever drugs they are taking, whatever destruction they are doing to themselves is still not uh, in their understanding. They don't understand what they are doing to themselves, how they are destroying themselves, how such a precious human life uh, they are wasting just for their own whim and for their so-called freedom. So it is extremely, extremely important that you should try to tell them in a fiery way, what are you doing? Why are you deceiving yourself? Why don't you understand this is wrong? At least for the progeny, you tell them that we did this wrong, but you should not do it. All this kind of talk has to be there and people have to get ready for such uh, great speeches and things. But to say that people uh, uh, won't like it, I think is the other way now. Unless and until you frighten them, they are not going to be with you. So you have to tell and warn them. And that's what the Mishnu Maya yesterday has suggested, that now take to a new style of strategy and talk to people in a way that whenever you are doing, say, you are doing a course, at the end of the course you have to say that, now see, Sahaja Yoga is not for only for doing course, but is for your well-being, for your benevolence, and you have to go further with it and you have to grow. Now don't leave it halfway. It's not like just sprouting the seed, but it has to become the tree, otherwise nobody can be helped. So, you see, just tell them the, uh, all the dangers of not being properly brought up or matured in Sahaja Yoga. It has to be told. Because all this lovey-dovey business doesn't help in America, I've seen that. You need really fiery people. Because recently I was listening to a speech of this Billy Graham, and I said, it's such an empty-headed fellow, talks through his hat. But still, 
<laughs> people were so impressed. And there was another one, now I think he's behind jail. Uh, I don't know his name, some funny man. So I saw him also, I was surprised, he was just talking something empty, uh, like an empty shell. And people were all mad after thousands standing, singing, doing this, doing that. So one has to understand that these people require shocks, and they have to be shocked and they have to be told that this is going to happen. There's one other organization which has gone into a kind of a uh, shocking system. Is uh, the uh, there? Brahma Kumari, Brahma Kumari. You see, these Brahma Kumaris have become like lightnings, and they tell people. Now they don't tell that you are destroyed. What they tell: this world is going to be destroyed. Everything is going to be destroyed, and uh, you know you are not prepared for it. What's going to happen? Same thing. Jehovah Witness is doing the same thing. They are saying this world is going to be destroyed, and <coughs> we are all going to be destroyed. So we should be prepared, and we sh- uh, we should take to God. But this is not reality. Despite that, people are after them. You have to tell them the reality that not only that you are destroying yourself, but you are destroying the future. People are already talking that most of the people in America will be destroyed. Now it comes from various reasons. We can say that there are no traditions and things. That's not the point. That's not the main point. One of the main points is that they destroyed so many people when they came and settled down in this country. That's one point. Now the boots of those people who died are still hanging around. And they want to see that they destroy Americans as far as possible. The amount of witchcraft, the amount of all negative uh, techniques that are working in America, they are working nowhere. The gurus had to get out of all the countries, but they are still very nicely settled in America. The reason is these booths are giving them ideas. It's not only that they need shocks. But also these booths give them these perverted ideas of destruction. So they go for their destruction. Now the bhutish ideas are such that uh, you see a person coming out of a pub, falls down. And the bhutish idea is that, what's the harm? You also try, you will never fall. You go in, nothing will happen to you. You are perfectly all right. After all, it doesn't matter. Or else uh, uh, you you tell them that this is wrong, we should not do. All right, so we are bad. So what? These are all bhutish ideas. These are not human ideas to talk like this or to say like this. So to all these people, see, the only thing that is going to bring round is the Vishnu Maya Shakti. Nothing else. I now realize that it's only through Vishnu Maya people can be cured. So. Vishnu Maya itself now has gone off to sleep, thanks to Christian religion, Catholic religion, and also Hinduism, because in Hinduism also there is an idea of sin, that you have sinned this, you have done that sin, so you give so much money to the Brahmin, so you will be saved. I mean, every religion has this nonsense. But this Vishnu Maya Shakti, which is being absolutely subdued and is sleeping in human beings, if you can raise it and tell people to get up, out of this slumber, this laziness, by involving them very much in a bigger way, by telling them that we are for peace, peace of the world. We are for the emancipation of the humanity. We are for saving people from blunders and from their destruction. If you take a bigger uh, platform and talk about those things, then it will be helpful. For example, now it's a very good thing that I was with Mahatma Gandhi, and people have got great respect for Mahatma Gandhi. Of course, and Mahatma Gandhi was very much impressed by me, no doubt. In very, even when I was a child, he used to consult me, and the uh, the uh, the proof of that is that in his bhajans, he has uh, put the serial of the uh, bhajans in different ways 
starting from the heart talking about the atma and then he is starting from the uh, muladhara upward like that so i mean that's one of the proofs that he uh, he must have consulted me but whatever it is you have can use him also that shri mata ji is doing what mahatma gandhi said he has talked about sarva dharma samanatva means all the religions are treated with same respect and same understanding once you start talking like that you see then people will understand that it has some noble heritage behind it because everybody wants to know from what book i have learned i mean i have never learned from any book that you know very well but you can say that she is the one who was with him and that she was very much impressed by her and the same ideas of peace and non violence and all that these are the same techniques and methods she wants to use that's a fact no doubt but mahatma gandhi was a very fiery speaker all people who have followed him were very fiery they were not just all right uh, come along have a cup of tea and uh, this kind of thing is not going to work out so americans need challenge and they need really a fiery person to blast them so now if you go on this way like the other day when we had a program in new york uh, and there were so many uh, black people and so many uh, uh, chinese and then there were so many uh, indians and very few were whites so whites came and said oh nothing has happened to me you know so then what you have to do nothing has happened yes that's what must be something wrong with you or must be you must have committed some sins or something so then they get a shock oh it's something surprising you haven't got it oh it's very wrong something wrong with you you should get it try to get it you know it's very wrong i hope you don't have cancer then <laughs> or you can ask are you suffering from aids no 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 then what are you suffering from how is it you didn't get it you see this black man got it this uh, chinese has got it why don't you get it you are a white skin man you should get it first <laughs> <coughs> then things will work out i have been thinking about it why these americans are so dull because you see they are on the whole very dull people extremely dull because this kind of a rock music you see if you play before anyone people <laughs> would run away <laughs> what is this going on but the way they like this rap music yesterday they wanted me to listen the heart started beating the other way round i said what's happening and the whole thing started shaking i sat on a bench and the whole bench was shaking the uh, who sat with me was uh, he was there and also karan was there and uh, we found <laughs> that he karan everybody was jumping like that on it was like a earthquake going on uh, so this is what it is that you see these people are very very dull people and numbed out and they are numbed out because of their so called freedom it's like you go and ask a bull come and hit me sort of thing you see they have gone out of the way to numb themselves completely and this numbness may be alcohol may be drugs may be women uh, may be marrying so many times say if you marry one time is sufficient if you marry five times i mean you become uh, i don't know what like a i don't know if there's any animal like that <laughs> but something you become absolutely numb to things you see because first of all marrying one wife then you have attachments with her you have children and you i mean after all uh, it's so much to do with your wife and then suddenly you divorce and you don't feel anything you don't feel it it's great numbness and if you tell them yes i know i know i know they know but they don't feel they don't feel that they are doing anything wrong they don't feel they have done anything Uh, absurd and they don't suffer any other person would suffer yes uh, he has divorced his wife and he becomes really uh, a person quite lost should be normally but here what you find uh, very nicely boasting you know i i have 
divorced my two wives, and I'm, this third one is coming up, you can meet her. So there's, there's no shame about it, no shame, no feelings, nothing. I mean, you married a woman, you lived with her, she was your wife, and you have no feelings for her. Your own children also, they have no feelings at all, no feelings. Of course, they are not like English, where the English people kill their children, so that's not so bad. But here I have heard also that they kill husband, wife, kills each other and all that. And for what? For love. When they do not have love for one husband, how are they going to have love for another husband? I can't understand. Love is a quality of heart. So this is what it is. If you see the whole character is numbed out, because they don't behave like human beings. They behave like, I don't know, again I say, I don't know like whom, because there's no comparison whatsoever. So it is not that only in America people are like that. It's all over, but in America it is too much, too much of it. And all such things rise from America, all such funny uh, notions rise from America, and everybody takes them because they know how to advertise, they know how to make it very, uh, uh, very popular. Once I was travelling by a by a ship, and a pilot came over the ship and he was talking to me and he told me that his brother is a very nasty devil. I said, what happened? So he said that he got hold of uh, these four boys who were Beatles and he became their manager. And he started this music and got some women, got them drunk, put them on drugs, and the first music, when they had that music, uh, these girls started screaming, <coughs> shouting, going mad, and it became popular. Normally the reaction would be that, bah, it's such a thing that when the music starts, the girls go mad, so don't go to such a music. On the contrary, so many started coming. How do you explain this kind of a reaction? The more they shout, the more they scream, according to them, is something. Means behind it is one thing, that it has touched them somehow. Otherwise, why will they scream? Means such dumb people have been touched by something, is something great, and all of us should go, we are also dumb, so we should attend to it. Now, you may ask me that, Mother, how, how this dumbness has come into people and this. It's as simple as that, as I told you that they have used their freedom to such an extent, their attention to such a wasteful uh, pursuits, that they have become really numb. Their attention doesn't feel anything. Attention, when you put it out, it reacts and it comes back to you uh, as something. But if you all the time go on bombarding outside your attention, this um, bombardment from outside just finishes all your sensitivity. There's no feeling, there's no attachment, uh, there's no uh, no recording of anything that is happening. So for that, I think Vishnu Maya is needed, and that's why she's placed on the left side, because Vishnu Maya is the one in charge of people who have become absolutely feelingless. That's why she's there to give you the feeling. So she on the left side when she shines, she gives you the feelings, and people start understanding. So now the only thing that they have is a kind of a mental idea that they are guilty, that's all. This is just mental. If it is mental idea, oh, I'm guilty, then you are not going to feel it. I mean, if you are uh, saying that you are mad when you are not mad, if anybody calls you mad, you are not going to feel it. It's like this. So they don't feel it at all, because it is all mentally accepted uh, thing and they have become numb. Now nobody can harm me, so what's wrong? Sort of an attitude. I would now ask you people to go all out and become fiery, write in newspapers and say what's happening and how things are. I'm writing a book like that now, it's called as Meta Modernism, and as far as I could be uh, fiery, I'm going to be there to tell them what's wrong with them and they should see to it that it's all wrong, no use uh, trying to uh, call it something great. 
like now eights have come up. I thought with eights they will be awakened. So now the eights have become a martyrdom. Uh, now the UP, UPs came up, I said the UPs, UPs will suffer from a disease. So now they said, no, 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 it's very nice to be UPs. After all, you see, there are another heroes who died for their UPs. Like you see, every stupidity is made into a something kind of a very glorifying thing. So just, and people accept it, that's the best part of it, they accept it. So it is important for you to be fiery and to show them in that light what they are. They have to be shown. It's not just the little light of the Spirit will show them much, but it's the real uh, dazzling, uh, burning light of a lightning. So today's puja is going to be specially for you all to develop that creativity of talking, behaving in every way, in a fiery way. That is going to put them right, nothing else. In creative work also, when we create something or we sing something and all that, uh, if you go on singing, say, in our Indian style, uh, some music which is vilambit uh, tal, you see, very slow talas, that won't come. They like somebody like Ravi Shankar, who just goes on mixing up notes and just goes on playing something which is very, very uh, unscientific according to Indian thing and is not at all entertaining, it doesn't open your heart and something like that. But that is the thing that appeals to them, to go into a big sort of a rock and roll sort, make it the tar into rock and roll and even worse than that, I don't know the new, latest one, I don't know what it is. So. The second thing is that you can see how they try to shock people. Also they try to shock people because they know that they are also like us. Like you go in the market, you find somebody uh, is pant, is not pant, even half pant, is all torn at wrong places. And it is just to shock people. Uh, they are supposed to hear at least they are supposed to, in America it is supposed to be, you have to dress up decently, you should not be indecently dressed, that's what they want. But what you find, whatever chance they can get to dress up in a way that you will be shocked, they would like to do. Like they'll have only one part of the hair as white, I mean anything, anything is possible, just to shock others. Shock others and attract the attention. And what do you get? Nothing. You spend so much money to attract the attention of others, but what do you get? That attention doesn't give you anything, doesn't pay you anything, doesn't compensate. So it's such a joyless pursuit they get it. All these things spoil their attention, it destroys it to this extent that they are feeling less people, they have no feelings left. And then the worst thing that has happened is that they have become absolutely money oriented. So the money is another side of Saraswati. Saraswati is uh, different from Lakshmi. So the Lakshmi and Saraswati never go hand in hand. This is the reason why when they get after Lakshmi, run after money too much, they get shocks because there's a suddenly you find the stock exchange has fallen, there's a recession, this business has gone, somebody who is very rich suddenly becomes a poor man. It's all the work, this is all the work of the Saraswati. And if somebody is too much in Saraswati, reads too many books, uh, is, uh, uh, is an artist who is very ambitious, who tries to outshine other artists and all that, such a person also gets back a reward from Lakshmi that his things never sell, he never gets money, he starves, all sorts of things. So these two things are in balance only in Hamsa. Or we can say they are in balance when you are a Sajogi. So this has to be achieved and is to be uh, put together in balance that you have the blessings of Saraswati as well as that of Lakshmi. But it crosses only 
at the Hamsa point and at the Vishuddhi point. So, what we have to do to bring the balance is that whatever uh, we are earning, whatever we are doing, we should not be in a mediocre way. We should try to do it in a dynamic way, in a fiery way. These two things should be combined at the Vishuddhi level. So now, supposing uh, you are going to give a lecture about uh, Sahaja Yoga in a fiery way, and if you wear a dress uh, that you look like a hippie or somebody coming out of a jail, nobody is going to take you seriously. But if you are properly dressed and you look respectable and presentation is good, and then you give a fiery speech, everybody is going to listen. So this principle of Lakshmi Tattva is to be used with the domination of the Saraswati principle. Now the another blessings of Saraswati is that uh, you can have knowledge of Sahaja Yoga. I have seen many women especially in Sahaja Yoga. They are Sahaja Yogis, they have vibrations, all that is there. But they, ha- they do not know what is Sahaja Yoga. They do not know what these chakras are. They do not know that how these vibrations go up. Now today's lecture is quite a lecture, quite complicated, I would say, if you see to it. You'll have to listen to it at least four or five times to understand it with a paper and a pencil. It's not an easy thing. Because I'm telling you now, it's all right, it's quite entertaining. But behind the entertainment, there is a deep knowledge. So the, I've not seen the Sajoginis mostly sit down with a paper and pencil to know what is Mother saying, what is the knowledge she's giving us about the various things. To them, Sajoga means uh, to be nice, to good good food and help the Sajogis and uh, that, of course, for the pujas to wear nice saris and nice dresses, come to the pujas and all that and finished also. So for them it is very important that they should also know what is Sajoga. They must listen to my lecture, sit down, study it nicely and understand it. The other way round are the men. For them, it is to do the, all the outside work, go round, see things, and all that. But as far as uh, relationships are concerned, or as far as uh, emotional side are concerned, they are negligent. And that is why Sahaja Yoga by men is different, Sahaja Yoga by women is different. And in France, especially, it had gone very far away from each other. The women were on one side, men are on the other side. Imagine in Sahaja Yoga to have such a nonsense as that. But then we discovered the person who was doing it and we managed it, so it was settled down and now things are better. But women must know about Sahaja Yoga. But that doesn't mean that uh, they should fight with them or think that they also know what, what these men know. But it's very, very common, I have seen, that men and women are having a different type of attitude towards Sahaja Yoga. One is an extrovert, another is an introvert. But in Sahaja Yoga there is no difference between a woman and a man, as far as knowing Sahaja Yoga is concerned. I am a woman myself and I know so much, so why not the women should know about what is Sahaja Yoga? So all the women who are here or all over have to know what is Sahaja Yoga. After my, I'll look at Vishnu Maya, she is a woman. It's the power that works. Brahma Deva doesn't work, he has created all these things because he has the power of Saraswati, otherwise he could not have created. So everything is done through the power and the power is a woman, but if the power doesn't know what is Sahaja Yoga, how is she going to work it out? So the women, though they have children, I know, uh, they have to look after the household, kitchen, but it's such a pleasure, such a joy to read about Sahaja Yoga, to understand it, to know it. Of course, some of them do also read. I am not saying that they do not, but there are very, very few, and they are very sensible, very sensible. 
So this is my uh, understanding of today's happening that in this natural surrounding, these natural surroundings, where we are blessed by the work of Brahmadeva and Saraswati, and where we can feel the capacity of these deities, to what extent they can create. The nature is absolutely one with the Divine. Now see, as soon as I came here, the nature knew I am there. It just started acting by itself. I didn't have to give them a lecture. They didn't have to do a puja, nothing of the kind. They knew what I was doing. I went to Los Angeles, same thing. Anywhere I go, the nature knows what is to be done. Now Mother is in the town, so what should we do? And they do it. So this is the trouble, is that I have made to do all kinds of deliberations for human beings, that, all right, do this, do that, do that. But I would say that spontaneously it should act, because now we are one. Just like the nature is one with me, you are also one with me. And that will should start happening when you will really become absolutely drawn into Sahaja Yoga, surrendered into Sahaja Yoga. Then only it will happen. May God bless you.
Shri Nirmala 
May God bless you all. May God bless you all. May God bless you all.